So recently I started building an indoor grow space in my room actually, much bigger than what you've seen already. And I need an exhaust fan for it. And when I look on Amazon.com, anything that's cheap also looks extremely poorly made in a possible house fire. So I'm actually going to be making one in this video. The exhaust fan I'm going to be building isn't just a normal exhaust fan. This one's going to be interfaced with an Arduino, a relay, and a temperature sensor in order to make the exhaust fan temperature controlled. So first and foremost, what you're going to need is a fan. I chose a 100 CFM fan and it's 115 volts, so this I can plug directly into my wall socket. Next, we're going to need three more items. One is a relay, two is going to be the Arduino, and number three is going to be our actual temperature sensor. I chose the TMP36. It's a really cheap sensor and it's pretty accurate and very easy to uh, get data from and use in these kind of applications. I chose the Arduino Nano just because it's much smaller and it has exactly what I need to do this project. I'll put links in the description for all of these items. Alright, so here is the basic wire schematic and how we're going to set everything up. You can see the black and red lines are going to be the actual sensor. Now, pay close attention and notice that those two lines are connected. In this situation, the 3.3 volt pin also has to be connected to the reference pin because that is going to give us much more accurate readings by feeding the voltage back in so that way the Arduino always knows exactly what voltage we're sending to the sensor so then it can do the correct math. The regular black lines are going to be for the relay. This is a much more simple setup. The Arduino Nano comes with the header pins that can fill every slot, but for me that's just a lot of soldering and it's completely unnecessary for this project. Because I'm not just experimenting with this board and I want a final uh, product out of it, I'm only going to solder on the ones I want. So break apart the header pins and get yourself two of them that are three pins long and one that is two pins long. Now to make sure they solder in nicely, just dip the ends in the flux. So take the shorter end of the header pins and just kind of jab them in the flux just to get some on the pins. This is going to help the solder go into the holes much cleaner. Next I take the header pins and put them in the place that they're supposed to be according to the schematics that I drew out. Now place one of the three pin headers over the ground and five volt pin holes. There's going to be one hole in between which we're not using. Then place the next three pin header over the 3.3 volt, the reference hole, and then the analog zero hole. Lastly take the two pin header and put it in the D2 hole and the ground hole. Once all three headers are in, flip it upside down so we have access to the underside of the board. If you look closely, you'll see that I'm shaky and I really suck at soldering. I'll spare you from watching me solder the rest of the holes because I promise you it looks much worse than this. Just make sure none of the solder crosses from one pin to the other so you don't short circuit your board. Alright, next we're going to work on the sensor. You're going to need some wire and you're going to need the actual sensor. And then to make things really nice and easy, DuPont connectors. When you look at your sensor, make sure you can see the writing. This is the front face. This lead is going to be your positive lead. The center one is going to be the actual data lead. And the last one is going to be your ground lead. Take the ends of the wires that will be used with the sensor and put DuPont connectors on them and then insert them into the three pin DuPont connector. To give the sensor a sturdy base, I broke a three pin long header off. As you can see, I'm going to solder it on. This gives it a way better way to interface it with the DuPont connectors. Most of the time when you get a sensor, it usually comes with a little PCB board or some sort of interface for the Raspberry Pi or Arduino, but I just bought bare sensors because it's much cheaper. As you can see, it really interfaces nicely with the three pin header and then we can plug it right into the DuPont connectors. Next, we're going to cover up this entire thing with shrink tubing. But before that, I just put some tape on some of the leads from the sensor just to prevent any sort of shorting out if it were to get bent or creased. This isn't necessary, but it's a nice form of protection just to make sure you don't short out the sensor. As far as the wires for the other end of the sensor that connect to the Arduino goes, you have to make sure you run a wire from the 3.3 volt to the reference pin. And that's all got to be jammed into the single 3.3 volt DuPont connection pin and then run back into the center pin where the reference is. So that way, as it feeds out the voltage to the sensor, it's feeding it into the reference pin also. You're also going to include the data line in the three pin DuPont connector. Your ground line for the sensor is going to be put into a single DuPont connector that goes on the other side of the Arduino. 
The next thing I'm going to prepare is the fan cord. This thing has to interface with the relay somewhere along its cord. I chose about 6 to 10 inches away from the actual fan and that's where I'm going to keep the Arduino and the relay. I run a razor down the center of the wire to separate the two wires. Next I'm actually going to clip one of the wires in half. This is where we're going to interface the relay. Now this is AC electricity so it doesn't matter which side you cut because the current alternates back and forth between both wires. Once the wire is cut I strip the ends a little bit and then I'm going to apply solder. By applying solder to the wires, it's going to allow it to get pinched in the relay much better and much stronger. This is a warning as far as this step goes. If you're following along, remember we are using AC electricity and it's 120 volts at minimum, potentially 220 volts depending on where you live. This is very dangerous and to be taken very seriously. When this is plugged in, do not touch the relay. Do not put your fingers near any of those pins. You could become electrocuted. Also, recognize that we don't have any fuses or safety things in place. So if something goes wrong with the actual relay, you could cause some sort of fire. I'm using this relay in the normally open configuration. This means that the fan will not run unless the relay is activated. This relay wasn't labeled so I had to just try all the terminals and this one ended up being the one I was after. So I'll just screw them down tightly so that way the wires cannot slip out. Now I have a three wire female to female DuPont connector ribbon cable and you're going to connect all three to the signal, the positive and the negative terminal. Now it's time to attach everything to our actual Arduino. So you're going to take your wires from the relay and then you're going to attach the positive wire to the five volt pin. Then you're going to attach the negative wire to your ground pin. Finally, take your data line, which is labeled S on the relay, and attach that to your D2 pin. Next, you're going to take your ground pin from your sensor and plug it into the ground pin on the other side of the Arduino, next to the D2 pin. Now you're going to take the sensor cable that you made, and first you're going to connect the 3 pin DuPont connector to the 3 pin header. Make sure you line up the voltage, the voltage reference, and the analog zero pins correctly and you don't mix them up. Remember, we're running the 3.3 volt pin back into the reference pin. As you can see the loop that's in the DuPont connector. Now that we have everything wired up to the Arduino, let's put the program on it. You're going to want to plug your Arduino into the computer through the USB port. You're also going to need the Arduino software in order to burn this to the Arduino. I'll provide a link in the description for this program and I'll also provide a link for the drivers necessary for this exact model. Here at the top of the program we have the config section. This is where we set the reference voltage, the temperature pin, and in our case we have to use an analog pin so I'm using A0. We also set the relay pin up here which is D2, we have to use a digital pin, and then we also set the range. The temperature range is a very important thing to consider because if you set yours to like 80 degrees at the max temp and then you set your minimum temp at like 79, because the temperature sensor isn't perfectly accurate, it's going to fluctuate really quickly between 79 and 80 and it's going to flick on and off, on and off, and your fan will not work appropriately. So make sure you give your fan a buffer so that way when it hits 80 degrees, it has to cool it down to 70 degrees. This way the fluctuations in the sensor won't cause it to turn on and off rapidly and you'll get a good efficient cooling effect. The rest of the program should be self-explanatory due to the comments or the nature of the functions that are written. When you get down to the math that's done with the voltage and the temperature, that's just stuff I've taken from the internet. I don't actually know how to calculate it very well so I used a bunch of different people's code to try and get the best one I could get. At the very end of the program, you'll see that there's Celsius and Fahrenheit. Because I live in the USA, we use Fahrenheit and I'm more comfortable with that, so I have that uncommented. But if you want to use Celsius, you just comment out the Fahrenheit return and then uncomment the Celsius return, and then you'll get Celsius temperatures. So once you're satisfied with the program, then you can hit the upload button and we'll upload it to the Arduino. Once it's finished uploading, then go to tools and open the serial monitor and check if everything's working. You should get a temperature sensor reading and it should be around whatever room temperature it is. Then you can take your fingers and just kind of squeeze the sensor end and your heat from your body should be enough to bring it up to whatever max temp you've decided. Listen for the click on the relay and you'll know everything's working appropriately.
All right, and now it's time for the final test. So I'm just going to plug it back into a power source and see if it boots up. And when it does, I'm just going to put my finger on the actual sensor and just wait and hope that the fan triggers and turns on when the sensor reads the max temperature that I set. And sure enough, it does. And once it reaches that, I'm going to place it behind the fan so the fan actually cools the sensor off down to my minimum and we'll see if it turns off. As you saw earlier when I showed you the parts, I have a lot of extra ones. And in celebration of all the subscribers I've gained over the past few months, I'm going to actually do a giveaway with the extra parts because I don't need them. To enter the giveaway, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and then enter in the comments what you plan on doing with it, and then I'll select two winners. Each winner is going to receive one Arduino Nano, one Relay, and one Sensor, and I'll even cover the shipping. And for those of you who are already subscribed, thank you so much. You've been encouraging me to make these videos and to keep doing this stuff. So for you, obviously, all you have to do is put a comment in the comment section on what you're going to do if you win, and you'll also be entered in the giveaway. I do regret to inform you that this giveaway is limited to USA residents simply due to shipping costs. If you are a foreign resident and you really want to enter, just, I guess, be prepared to pay shipping if you do win. Well, I hope you guys like this actual tech video, and I hope you can see that the application it can be used for is great. For those of you, like me, who grow plants indoors and have a lot of LED grow lights, they produce a lot of heat. So this is a very good, efficient way to exhaust the heat without having to run a fan 24-7 all day using up electricity. Thanks again for all the support, guys. We're close to 1,000 subs, which has been a goal of mine for a long time. And yeah, I mean, thanks for watching these videos. Thanks for commenting, liking. All of it's very encouraging. So uh, thanks for watching this. I hope this helps you guys make a nice fan, exhaust fan, and I hope it works out for you. Thanks again and stay tuned for next time.